everyone thanks for tuning in i hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to i'm lauren and in this video i'm going to be chatting to you about how to use the prim vario pliers and all of the different fastenings and poppers and things that come along with them so this video does specifically focus on the prim ones there are other types and other brands of poppers or fasteners out there and you'll notice that during the video i'll sort of use the same similar terms to refer to the same thing so like poppers snaps fastenings and um, essentially anything that you're putting on that kind of clicks or sort of pops together and um, there is a really large range of things that prim do that you can use with these pliers so i'm going to show you quite a big selection in this video but there are other things as well that you can get and um, everything that i'm going to show you in the video is available to buy in my online shop and i'm going to link to the blog post that goes along with this video in the description too and in there you can see all of the links to where you can find the listings for them on my online shop and we do ship worldwide as well so first of all, I'm going to cover just some general tips about using them and some troubleshooting questions as well. Maybe if you've tried to use them before, some issues that you might have come up against. So first of all, just generally, what are they and what do you use them for? So they're, they work like a pair of pliers, so you just sort of squeeze them like that. And at the heads of the pliers, there's two holes. That's where the little red things are. And into those holes, you have to insert a tool set. So the tool set is crucial to being able to use the pliers and the tool set is unique to each type of fastener or sort of popper that you use. So each one has its own specific tool set. Now, when you actually purchase the fasteners or pops, whatever, whatever they are, they generally come with the tool set with them. So you can see in this packet here, this is for some jersey snaps here and the little white things that are in that section of it there, that's the tool set that goes in the pliers. Now, most of the things that you buy from Prim do look like this. So they come with that sort of plastic bit in the middle and that's to use to apply the tools if you don't have the pliers. So if you do have the pliers, then you don't need that middle section there. The exception is the colour snaps. So that is these ones here. And um, you can get them in loads of different colours and sizes as well and shapes. Most of them are circular. Some of them are stars or hearts as well. So with that one, you do actually have to get a separate tool set, um, which comes like this. So if you already own the pliers um, and you have them in your tool kit, then you would just need that to buy the tool set separately to go with the colour snaps. Otherwise, it comes with it as you're buying it. Um, or if you're just buying the, the pliers new, you've not had them before, then when you buy the Prim Love version of the pliers, um, then they do come with the tool kit for the colour snaps included with it there. So as I talk through all the different types and how to actually use them, then you'll just see this common theme. You've got to get the right tool set for the snap that you're using and insert that into the pliers. And then that's how you can then successfully use the pliers to put them on. So some of you might be thinking, are the pliers essential for putting on these different things? The answer is no, you can do it through other means as well. So you can use an old fashioned hammer and then with that little tool that I showed you that comes with the snaps there. If you wanted to do the colour snaps, I would say you do need the pliers for that. But the other ones you can use with a hammer that come with that plastic bit. Um, the other alternative is that you can use this little tripod tool that Prim also sell and it is good if you're applying a, a fastening in the middle of a big bit of fabric and you can't really like fit the pliers into the fabric. So again, you would use that with a hammer and it just has little holes in it here that you insert the tool set into and then it just sort of works a bit like a sandwich. You would print, you know, you'd have the, the fabric in there, the tool set, and then you just hammer on the top. The other option that you could do if you were inserting a, a popper or a fastening into like the middle of a bit of fabric is that you could just break the hinge on that and then you would sort of have something top and bottom to hold the tool set. Um, I've not actually tried that before. You'd have to like really make sure that you spent a bit of time kind of making sure it was all lined up, but definitely a possibility. So yeah, the 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 short answer is the pliers aren't essential for putting on all the different fastenings, but they do make it a heck of a lot easier. So the other thing that you might sort of come across when you start to kind of collect lots of these different 
fastenings and poppers is how to actually store them. Um, the boxes that they come in aren't totally practical for storing them. I mean, you could open them up at the back and then kind of tape it shut again once you'd finished using them. But what I actually use, which is what is out here to store mine, um, it's actually a fishing tackle box. Um, I did get it on Amazon um, a while ago and the, this exact one I don't think is available anymore, but generally like a fishing tackle box, you know, you're gonna be able to find variations of them. They have lots of different compartments, which is great. So you can see that I've, I've been able to sort of take, take out sections and just store all of the little bits here. And then they all kind of fold up into this box and it's got a section in the top, which I can actually keep the pliers in as well. So it's been really handy for keeping a lot of different things together. Um, Prim have recently brought out these little boxes here, which are quite cute, they look like flowers, and you just click them open and then inside there, they've got lots of little compartments. Um, it comes as a set of two. Um, so that's just another option to put them together. Um, so that is how, that's sort of various ideas of how you can actually store them. Then when it comes to actually putting the snaps on, you have to make sure that you have stabilised the fabric. Now I'm going to cover specifically how to do that or get, give you some pointers on that for each of the different types of fastenings, but you do have to do something to sort of strengthen the fabric before you put the fastener on just to make it more robust and make it more longer lasting that it can sort of take the wear and tear of the opening and closing and that the fabric just doesn't sort of start to kind of make a bigger hole or sort of rip or anything like that. So generally speaking, you're going to be using iron-on interfacing, um, but what you'll see when I come to talk about some of the other snaps and poppers that are just a bit heavier, you can kind of pad the backing out with more fabric just to give the fastener more purchase to hold on to and it just makes it a bit longer lasting as well. The other common question that I get asked when it comes to applying these is working out the placement for them as well. It's generally going to be similar to how you would consider how to place buttons and buttonholes onto fabric. So when you've got a placket in front of you, you want to obviously make sure that the snap is going to be located centrally in the placket. You know, you don't want it obviously hanging over the edge there. And I usually would put in one side of the fastener and sort of get it set in place. And then once that's kind of secure, I would then be lining it up with the other side of my placket and sort of using a pin to work out exactly where it needs to go. And um, if you mark everything first, sometimes be like slight variations by the time the poppers actually get in. So that's why it's good to just do like one side, get that fixed and then do the other side after that. So another common question that I often get asked with pliers is how do you actually remove them if you put them on by accident or sort of something goes a bit wrong? Now, I've got to admit, it is pretty hard to get them off. So it's better to like really try and concentrate and like just not get them wrong in the first place. But of course, mistakes can happen. Things can go wrong. You want to remove them. So depending on what snap it is, there might be like a different solution. For the colour snaps, there is actually a specific removing set that you can get for that. Um, and it covers the two different sizes of colour snaps that you can get. So that's why there's three, three sort of bits in the packet. When you actually open the packet, that little plastic bit isn't already on the metal, I've just clicked it on already. Um, but you pop that plastic bit onto that side of the tool, pop it into your pliers and then for whatever diameter you've got, so that's this, the smaller 9mm diameter, this is for the 12.4mm diameter, so you just sort of click that in on the other side. And then what you're going to do is get your snap here and essentially what it's going to do is break it. Um, so you just want to line it up with the um, with the snap and then give it a good squeeze and you'll find that it just sort of breaks and kind of crunches and then yeah it can, it can just be removed and sort of taken off like that and um, then to actually get the tool set out of here you can use this little red gadget that also comes with the prim, pli prim love pliers there and you just kind of click that on and then just push and it just sort of helps to kind of eject the tool set out and um, they're obviously quite stiff and um, which is good because you want it to sort of stay in position and um, but it just helps you to pull it off and then you can just kind of pick that little plastic bit out there so that is how to remove them but as i said it's probably better just to try really hard to get them in the right place in the first instance sorry i've not got any other kind of magical 
answers or sort of help for how to get rent when they go on wrong. But yeah, for the colour snap, that is that tool removing set. Another really common question that um, I find to get asked a lot is why are the pliers coming off or why aren't they sort of working? Why aren't they clicking together? Now, I would say from my experience of using the pliers myself and teaching people how to use them in workshops, usually the most common reason is that not enough force has been put through the handles of the plier when you're actually applying them onto the fabric to engage them and lock them together properly. You have to hold the pliers at the bottom. It puts the greatest amount of force through the top. So, so yeah, you just have to make sure you're holding at the bottom, using both hands and really, really giving it a good squeeze and waiting till you sort of feel that give or feel it kind of engage. You don't feel it as much with the plastic ones, but you do with the metal ones. And um, the next thing that you have to check is that you are actually using the right type of fastener for the project and the fabric that you're using. Um, they do have different fastening strengths. Some are stronger than others. The plastic ones are a bit of a lighter strength. The metal ones are a bit stronger. So if you're using um, a very heavyweight fabric, a thicker fabric, but you're using the plastic snaps on it, it's probably not the best match because there's just, you know, there's not enough strength there. So making sure that they sort of fit together properly. But when I go through all of the different types I'm going to show you, then I'll sort of touch on that again, what's good fabrics to use with what fasteners. The next thing is making sure that you have got the correct sort of convex and concave parts that actually lock together and that you're getting the kind of right sides of the, the snaps or poppers facing each other so they can actually lock together um, and again when I show you each individual one you'll see them up close and you'll see what parts are supposed to go together. The next thing is stabilising the fabric and you have to stabilise the fabric with something to just give it more strength because essentially something's going through it through the fabric and that's going to weaken it and you want to make sure that the hole that gets made in the fabric is sort of supported with something so generally that's going to be iron-on interfacing that makes the fabric much stronger but it might actually be that you want to put an additional layer of fabric in there as well just to give give the snap sort of more purchase something else to hold on to for some of the fasteners you have to actually punch a hole in the fabric for other ones they come with a sort of sharp spoke on them that you can use to make the hole but the idea is, is that generally you have to make the smallest hole needed for the fastener. The bigger the hole, the more likely it is to sort of stretch with wear and tear and getting washed and all of that sort of thing. And that it would then just sort of, the hole would get so big that the whole thing would just sort of fall out. So always try to make the smallest hole possible when you are getting ready to put your snap on. There are different ways that you can make a hole in the fabric. So it might be that you use some punch pliers here that come with lots of different sizes. It tends to work better on sort of thicker fabrics. Um, denim is good. Um, if it's quite a dense weaved fabric, like a cotton canvas or something, then you might struggle. Um, in that instance, you could use an, an awl, which is just like a really sharp pointy thing. Um, you could use that. Or there is actually a tool set that comes with the prim love version of the pliers and you can cut a hole with that fabric so you can cut a three millimeter or a four millimeter diameter hole so to use that one you need these parts of the tool set you just pop them into your pliers there and then just sandwich your fabric in between give it a good squeeze at the bottom of the pliers and then you'll see that it just makes a nice little hole in the fabric there so that is another option or the other option might be to actually just cut a hole in it if you're putting in quite a large diameter eyelet for example then it might be that you actually have to just use a pair of scissors to cut a hole in the fabric so um yeah it depends on what tools you've got whatever method you want to use but the principle is always make the smallest hole needed for the fastener that you're using so I'm now just going to go through all of the different types of fasteners that you can get and I'll show you them in detail, show you actually how to apply them. So the first one is the colour snaps and they come in lots of different colours and you can get different designs and shapes as well. So you can get heart ones, star ones, ones with smiley faces on them and you can get two different sizes as well. Prim recently bought out, brought out a smaller 9mm diameter one. So for that one, you do actually have to get the smaller tool set to go with that. Um, but yeah, you can get mixed bags or you can get ones that it's just like one colour all together. And the tool set for them, again, is going to be coming with the Prim Love pliers or you can purchase it separately as well. 
So the strength of the colour snap ones is a lighter fastening strength and they are good for kids clothes, like it might be that you use them on the shoulder seam or at the centre back, you can use them in place of buttons or you could use them on cuffs for example. I would say they're probably best suited to woven fabrics but you can use them on jersey fabrics as well, just make sure that you've really stabilised the fabric on the jersey fabric before you use them. There are specific jersey snap fasteners which are the next ones I'm going to show you but you can try them on jersey ones if you want they're just not the best ones to use with jersey. So when you come to actually put the snaps on you want to lay out all of the different parts of it so that you can kind of get your head around of what's what and what it looks like. So you're going to have your two backing pieces and then you've got your concave one and your convex one. So that is what they are looking like here. And for both sides of the snap, it's going to be the same tool set that you use. So that's what this looks like here. So you're going to click that into your pliers like that. And then you can see that the backing of the snap has got a spoke on it. And you're actually going to use that to push a hole in the fabric. So you don't need to pre-punch a hole with this one. You just use the, the pointy bit on the back of the snap for that one. Place your other side over the top like that and then get your tool set all clicked into position like so. Get it all lined up and before you do that really big squeeze, just make sure it's all sort of engaged and lined up. Hold at the bottom of the pliers, really good squeeze. And then what you'll see is that that spoke essentially gets flattened and that's what locks the two sides together. So then you would want to just be lining that up with your placket, working out where you want to put the other side of it again, using the spoke to push through the fabric, put the other bit on the top, place that over, get it lined up and then give it a, give it a squeeze. Um, and then you want to check that they can actually fit together. If at this stage you're finding that they don't click together and that you're finding trouble getting them to engage, it's probably because you've not squeezed it hard enough. So you just need to get everything lined up again and give it another good squeeze. So I would say they're pretty easy to put on. You don't need like a huge amount of force. You do still need to use like both hands at the bottom of the pliers, but one of the easier ones to apply. So the next fastener that I'm going to show you is the ones for using with jersey. Now they come in lots of different colours as well and most of them I think have just got that sort of little kind of round circle appearance on the back but you can get ones that are for jersey that are sort of filled in as well. The characteristic of this one that's different is that it's got all of these little spokes on the back so it's going to grip onto the fabric much much more. You do still have to stabilise the fabric generally you're going to be applying them on an area of the garment that doesn't need to stretch. So for example, it would be like a baby grow, the gusset section of the baby grow, that part of the garment doesn't need to stretch. So it's fine to put interfacing on there to make it a bit more robust and heavier, give the snaps more to, to sort of purchase and hold on to, they're less likely to fall off that way. And then obviously the rest of the garment can stretch. So again, you want to lay out all of the different parts of the the snap before so you can get your head round about what goes where you've got your concave bit you've got your convex bit and then your two backing pieces as well so that's what they all look like there and then because they've got those sharp spokes on them you don't need to make a hole in the fabric first you're just going to use them to push through the fabric they're quite sharp so as soon as you start pushing through with your thumb you'll see them just start to appear round then you're going to sort of start to line that up. Now the tool set for this one just looks the same for both sides of the snap and the, the and the, they're both identical as well so you don't need to worry about what's lining up where and then you're going to just line that tool set up with your snap that is in your fabric and then before you actually give it that final good squeeze just make sure you're all sorted, give it a good squeeze take it out and then you're going to do the nail test to check that it's actually sort of stuck in position so you shouldn't really be able to get your nail underneath there. You can see it just gives a lovely finish on the other side. So same for the backing piece, just click your, click your tool set into the pliers. You're going to use those spokes to make a hole in the fabric there and then just line it up gently, then get ready to give it a good squeeze really hard open it back up, do the nail test, check that it's stuck, and then you can check that they're just going to click together nicely, which they do. So I think they're, they're, they're probably one of my favourite ones, the jersey ones. I think they look lovely. 
and that little circle bit's just like a really nice finish on them too. So yeah, they are intended for jersey, but I have actually used them on a lightweight denim dress before. So I think if your fabric's lightweight enough, those spokes can actually get through, then you can use it on that too. Obviously for a thicker fabric, like a denim and a cord, they're not gonna be great, but if it's a lighter weight woven fabric then, and you can get you can get those spokes through the fabric, then I think you could use them on that too, if you like that sort of circular finish of the snap. So the next one I'm going to show you is the metal anorak snaps. So as the name suggests, they are good for anoraks. I've used them on quite a few different anoraks that I've made, but you could also use them on garments out of heavier weight fabric like denim or cord. Say it was a skirt, for example, that had buttons down the front, you could use them in place of the buttons um, or a dress, something like that, or a pinafer. You could use them there too. They come in lots of different colours and the outside of them has just got this really lovely finish. It almost looks like a bit like a button. I think you can get decorative ones too. We just have plain colours, but we do have quite a lot of different colours in stock. And these have more of a medium fastening strength, so they are going to be a lot stronger and a lot sort of yeah, more durable than the plastic ones, for example. So again, you want to get all of your different pieces set out before you actually start. So um, the outside piece here, the one that you would want visible on your project, that is gonna go with that piece there. And then your two backing pieces, this one with its little sort of spoke, and then little kind of rounded bit that goes on top of that. And then the tool set for this, there's quite a lot of different tools for this one because each part, each of the four parts of this snap has its own tool set. So the backing parts have this one here. They all sort of fit together like that. And then the other side, they have these two pieces here. So that is how they all sort of go together like that. That's all the different tool sets there. Now with this one, because there's no sharp bits in the actual bits of the popper, you do have to punch your hole in the fabric before you actually start. So you need to do that with whatever means that you are gonna be punching your hole with, the punch pliers or the awl, whatever, you, whatever tools you've got. And then put your tool set into the pliers in the usual way. So you're just clicking it in like that. And then that little rubber seal that's around the bottom, I'll just sort of hold that spoke bit in place there. Now, what you might want to do when you come to put this backing piece on is cut out a few sort of little squares of the same fabric, punch a hole in it as well, and just thread them through when you actually come to put this on. It just means that there's going to be more fabric and sort of more kind of thickness for the snap to sort of grip onto. So in high traffic areas, like a pocket opening, for example, that's gonna be opened and closed a lot, you want it to be really durable and that just helps to sort of strengthen and stabilize it a little bit. So you would just punch your hole in those little squares, feed them through that little spoke, and then they would, you know, they'd be on the inside, they'd be in the back of your fabric. Then you would just put your little piece on the top like that. And then before you do that final real hard squeeze, just get everything lined up, squeeze at the bottom of the pliers. You will feel them give, you'll feel that, hear that little sort of crunching noise. And then you can do the nail test, check that it's nice and, <laughs> nice and secure. And then when you come to do it, the other side of the snap, again, you're gonna to have to make your hole in the fabric and then change your tool set over to the other side like that and then just use the, the backing piece to sort of feed through that little hole, place the other side of the snap on top, get everything lined up, slowly just close the pliers to get them engaged. Once they're engaged, then you can do that big hard squeeze again. You'll feel it give, you'll hear a little sort of clicking noise, and then you'll see that it's just sort of flattened it, sandwiched it together, and then you can check that they click together nicely. So, and I think that just gives a really lovely finish in the outside. So that is the anorak snaps. And the next ones that I want to show you are the eyelets. So for the eyelets, they are gonna be good for things like if you've got a drawstring in your jacket where the drawstrings come out, you might want to put eyelets there, or it might be in bag making maybe, you want to put eyelets on there too and then have the straps coming out, or on an apron, for example, you could have them and then have like the ribbons for the apron coming off. So with the pliers, you can put up to eight millimeter diameter eyelets on. If you've got eyelets bigger than that, then they will come with their own sort of little tool set that you have to use with a 
hammer basically. Um, but for the eight millimeter ones here, that's the one that I've got here. You just get your pieces out. So that is the tool set. And then it's got like a little washer that goes at the back. Now you do have to cut a hole in the fabric for this one because it's quite a big diameter. And the way that I would sort of recommend doing that is fold, folding the fabric in half and then in half again. So you've got that little sort of folded pointed corner and then just trim a tiny little bit of that corner off. Remember, you can always make it bigger if it's not big enough. You always want to be making the hole as small as possible. So then once you've got that hole, then you just want to sort of stretch the eyelet around it like that. Get your tool set and your pliers as usual. And then you can put your little washer bit on the top, sandwich the fabric in between. Again, you are going to want to interface the fabric just so that it's less likely that that hole will open up with wear and tear. Slowly close the pliers together just so they get engaged and then a real good squeeze right at the bottom of the pliers. You'll feel that metal give because essentially what the tool's doing is just sort of bending and curling the metal round to lock that washer in position. I think that just gives a lovely finish. It looks really, really slick and, and really nice. Um, so that's the eyelets, nice and easy to apply there. The next one I wanted to show you is the jeans buttons. Now there's a few different styles with the jeans buttons. You can get ones that have sort of flat shiny surface like this silver one. You can get ones that have got little design on them or you can get ones that have got a little hole in the middle as well. So depending on the design, there's a slightly different tool set that you have to use. So for the one that has got the little hole in the middle, the backing piece looks slightly different as well. It looks a bit more like the one that you use for the anorak snaps. That's the tool set that goes with them. And then for the one that's got the flat surface on it, the backing piece for that looks a bit like a drawing pin. And then again, got a slightly different tool set for that as well. So I'll show you how to use the one that's got the hole in the button first of all. And because there's nothing sharp there, you do have to punch a hole in the fabric for that. So using whatever means you're going to use to punch the hole, you do that. And then just feed that little spoke through the fabric and then that little sort of flat disc and the pliers, that's where the backing piece is going to sit. And then your other piece at the front is what's gonna sort of squidge it all together. So you're feeding that back spoke through the fabric, place that other one on the top, slowly close it together, wait till they engage, then give it a really good squeeze and it's going to work a bit like the eye but really it sort of flattens that metal and just locks the two pieces together so that's the one with the hole in the front then if it is the one that has got the flat flat surface on the front of the button because the back of that is a bit like a little spoke that's sharp you can use that to push a hole through the denim so you just want to sort of wriggle it with your nail it will be a little bit tricky and um, it just sort of push it through and then that will just end up sort of sitting on the top put your tool set in the pliers obviously the bigger ones for the front of the button the smaller ones for the back so just click that all in together slowly close it make sure it's engaged and all lined up then give it a good squeeze it's quite easy to put them on you'll feel it sort of give and then it's on. So I would say that it is pretty important to really stabilise your fabric when you put these on, especially if it's in a sort of high use or high traffic area. I've made quite a lot of pairs of jeans and I wear jeans all the time. So my jeans buttons get quite a lot of use. And I have found that even despite like the waistband being interfaced and there being like two layers of denim in the waistband, I have still had buttons come loose before. So it might be that you want to do that trick that I showed you with the anorak snaps where you just put like a little couple of extra squares of fabric at the back just so it's got more to sort of hold on to and maybe a couple of layers of interfacing just to sort of double it up and make the fabric more robust and um, all these things just help make things yeah longer lasting. So that is the jeans buttons, I really like them, they're just really lovely way to sort of finish off your garments and then the last thing that I'm going to show you is the rivets so they are decorative they're good for heavier weight fabrics like cord and denim so it might be that you're putting them in the top corners of a denim pocket for example or a pocket at the front um, or if it was a pinafore dress with a patch pocket at the front you might want to put them there too so this is what they look like here. You can get different ones. We've got bronze ones and silver ones. I think you can get different sizes as well. And that, so that's the back, that's the front. That's what you see from the outside of the fabric. And then that's the little tool set. So you can see that one's got a little sort of hole in it. So that matches up with that one and that one's to the back. Again, because there's nothing sharp, you're gonna have to punch a hole in the fabric when you do this one. 
So again, whatever means you're making your hole with, pliers or otherwise. And then that little sort of rubber grip that's on that tool set will just help to hold that backing piece sort of stable. And then you can pop that into your pliers and then do the same with the other side. So you can put your other side of your rivet into there and that little rubber grip will hold it on, pop that into your pliers, feed that through the fabric like so, and then slowly close it together. Just make sure they're engaged and then give it that real good squeeze. Take it out. You might find that the rubber sort of still grips onto it even when you remove the pliers. And then, yeah, it just gives that really lovely finish. You can do the nail test again, check it's on nice and secure. So I hope you find that useful and interesting and that seeing it up close and seeing what all the tool sets look like just give you a bit more confidence to use the pliers. But hopefully you've seen the general theme of each one is that you need that right tool set to be the correct tool set to be in your pliers. You need to use enough force. You need to like really squeeze the pliers to get everything to engage. And yeah, I would say it's really pretty simple once you get going with it. There's so many lovely fun things that you can do with your projects. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I shall try to help you. You can always email the shop as well if you're looking for something on the website that you can't find. And um, we can try to help you there too. I'll put the, the email address um, that you can use in the description of the video too. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.